Hey everyone, welcome back to another Anime Kingdom Reviews. You see by the title below, this is on episode 22 of Macross Delta. And yes, I said Macross Delta. It's actually subbed already. What? It's been quite a while, to be honest, that we've actually had it subbed, like, kind of on time. I mean, it was pretty much way before, but still, usually we have to wait, like, a couple days before it's been subbed. So, finally, at least, we do get an episode where it's already subbed. Um, I expected this episode to be more action oriented. We did get some action in it, but I'm still kind of sad in a lot of things. For instance, for example, one of the big things I thought in this episode we end up having would be some more knowledge on who, you know, Mikumo really is. But throughout this episode, it's more of her just like saying, you know, it doesn't matter who, you know, how she was born or what was happened with her she's here to sing kind of thing and they kind of just brush aside the fact that she was you know born in a tube and I get it kind of in the fact that obviously in this 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 moment they need to focus on their true objective which is to stop the Windermans and everything so I kind of do understand that but it just makes me kind of sad because I really did want to learn more about Mikamo that was one of the main things that I really wanted to learn about and there's just it makes me feel like we're never really gonna see Lady M at all like that's one of the things that maybe I thought since obviously you know Lady M it's up to Lady M if they would let Watakira out it's up to Lady M about the whole Mikamo thing and then they kinda just brush it aside and we're going on our main mission it's like they built up a bunch of this stuff that whole thing of you know Konami running in and then finding Mikamo in a tube singing and everything and then the next episode them being in jail and then the very end you know showing the whole thing with you know Mikamo finally saying some of the stuff of you know her being born in a tube she's just three years old pretty much and all this kind of stuff and that was pretty much it they just brush aside all of that it's like what it's kind of just like how it was about Hayate's dad they brought that up several episodes ago and it was a pretty damn big thing we have mentions it with Kasim saying you know Immelman and all that kind of stuff and then it's just been brushed aside so it's kind of like I don't really like that there's a lot of things that I really have in my head that I just want to know already I've wanted action for quite a while so I am happy that they are at least putting that factor that part in this one it wasn't some crazy dynamic like you know amazing gun um fl you know dog fights kind of thing but there was a couple cool scenes where like for example you know Mirage and Hayate kind of like back to back shooting around doing their own kind of formations kind of thing to take them out and that was pretty cool to be honest but that was pretty much I gotta say that was pretty much all that there was it was kind of mostly most of the episode was the first half being the fact that you know the mission's gonna start kind of thing uh, Miraj is taking pretty much responsibility for the whole thing laying um what's it called Freya and Hayate go out to fight but if she has to she will take responsibility and if she has to she will shoot down Hayate and that's pretty much the main thing in this later on that we see and they're tr literally trying to f like force down our throat this love triangle kind of thing like literally trying to with this whole part where she you know Freya's not you know they, we do get a new song that's another good thing at least but it's kind of it was kind of not as good since Freya wasn't really full on into it and when she finally you know pretty much got slapped into reality Mik by Mikamo saying hey get your shit together kind of thing and you know listening to everyone else Freya um, listening to um, Hayate and Mirage she was finally able to start singing of course we get one of the classics that we've heard before already whenever we want to get hyped up kind of thing and she starts singing to which the battle begins and you see Hayate is kind of let's just say he's going out of control with Kasim chasing him and all of a sudden he goes fully out of control like literally just shooting off in random directions Mirage has to try and save him to which of course then he turns his guns towards her and is about to fire at her to which all of a sudden she's about to aim at him and she can't do it so instead she ducks under the fire and tackles him in a way trying to get him to stop and then you have this moment where like their spiritualness kind of thing with Freya on one side and Miraj on one side trying to help Hayate and in the end it's like thank you it's because of you guys I could do this like all that kind of stuff and it's like they're literally just trying to force it down our throat that this is a love triangle kind of thing it's so irritating like I honestly 
I see more hope with Hayate and Mikamo going on and they only said a couple lines in this one about how it was pretty much not a romance kind of thing that's going on in that part when they finally have talked to which is pretty crazy because this is like one of the only times that we have seen them talk in the past 22 episodes you know so yeah it took quite a while but hey we have a conversation with two of the main characters so pretty much it's mostly just about how they're kind of similar kind of thing um Hayate being that he can only fly, she can only sing, and they, they kind of have like a little heart-to-heart -heart moment about how they are similar in a way, and they're going to help each other out kind of thing. And that was th that was pretty much like, just from that, I could see more possibilities of, I'm not saying I want that to happen, especially with only this much episodes left, but I already see with just that, that Hayate and Mikamo have more of a chance of being together, more, you know, of anything happening between them than Hayate and Mirage like I literally feel the whole thing with Mirage has just been since they started to think about it like oh my gosh we gotta do a love triangle like we always do they've just been trying to force it down our throat that Mirage is a possible you know person in this love triangle throughout this whole thing and this one right here is especially they're like what are we gonna do what can we make it so you know she will have a factor in this even though obviously she did confess to which we kind of just like whoop threw that in the air like that didn't happen kind of thing and pretty much we had this moment where she ends up trying to risk her life by tackling him and then her and Freya both have a moment to saving him kind of thing that was pretty much what happened in this one like honestly I get that you guys tell me that the love triangle is never really that good in this so I never understand why put it in then like I feel like if you just have a romance if you want to put romance there's nothing wrong with that I love a good romance why must there be a love triangle? And if you're going to do a love triangle, can you at least try? I really feel like they just like thought of it towards the end. Like, oh, shit. We have to put in Mirage as a love triangle potential kind of thing going in. And just threw it at us. Like, literally threw random ideas at us. And then finally, in this episode, they're like, okay, we got to have this moment. This is the, the, po the point where it really shows that she is obviously not only have a connection with Freya, but a connection with Mirage. And that's pretty much what happened in this episode, that part. I, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know how that's going to be. Um, but that's obviously a big factor that we will see in the next episodes. But pretty much this whole episode, it was cool. I like the music in certain parts. Um, I mean, we only got one new song to which, like I said, it was kind of ruined by the fact that Freya wasn't fully into it. But it was cool to see the whole dogfight that did happen. Kasim, I don't really understand. If you guys can f please comment below if you do know why. I don't understand why Kasim was so hell-bent on pretty much going full force and losing his life. He, you saw that, I mean, before with the, the last battle with Heinz, that the it was aging him kind of thing. And this one, he just used all of his life force to the point where he's just like at, the, at Keith's level, to the point where he just dies outright and you have a moment with him at the very end like reaching out to his son that he sees with the apples and everything and I'm like if you care so much about your son why are you killing yourself I honestly didn't really understand that I may be missing something if you guys please sorry if I am missing something and like I'm completely you're like are you stupid you don't see all this and this feel free to come below on that because really I am kind of confused at this like maybe he, like he's trying his best to save you know Windermere from them kind of thing but I don't get why it's necessary for him to go full on force and in the end it doesn't even end up working. It's, he's about to kill Hayate to which of course Hayate ends up being lucky because all his life force is gone and you have this moment where he ends up dying to which it is sad because of the whole fact of his son and everything and he was one of the characters that you know was more nicer to um, them and everything but like I don't know it's not like a main character like when when um, Messer died, I kind of, I definitely had some feels there. This one, it had some feels and like, oh man, but it, it, it kind of ruined it for the fact that I had no idea why he was going so full on like that. It's funny because he's going so full on like this and then you have Keith, he's just on the side. I don't even know what happened to him. He came flying with them and then boop, he's no longer there. Or was he on the other planet? Yeah, never mind. I think he was on the other planet, I think. But it, it's like he's not even trying at all, really. And you do see in this episode, there is some moments with the Winterman kind of stuff 
Royd is not himself, obviously, after what he saw, the Star Singer kind of thing. That's another thing. I was really interested in learning more about the Star Singer. Nope, not going to learn about that. Royd actually barely appears in this episode. Keith has a moment with his half-brother, you know, Hines, and you see a flashback with Hines trying to say hi to his brother, and he's just like... And he gets back to his regular sword fighting kind of thing, and you see that he's no, he was never there for him, and he, you know, he tries to tell him about his win and everything, because you know, pretty much Hines is just following whatever Royd says, because he really believes everything Royd says, even though obviously Royd has something hidden that he is not. He obviously doesn't fully care about what what happens to Hines. He's willing to sacrifice Hines for this goal kind of thing, obviously, and Keith can see that, and he's trying to tell him. You know, Heinz, you know, is this really your true win kind of thing? And that's pretty much the only part we had with the Winterman of, the, you know, the main focus on their side. Besides, obviously, now that Water Cure and Delta, well, most of Delta are on the planet, on the Winterman planet. And I'm, I'm hoping the next episode, this is episode 22. I said there is 25 episodes, right? Let me check. 26 episodes, actually. So we still have... Um, one, two, four more episodes. I can't count what the hell is wrong with me. So, yeah, we still have four more episodes. So, I'm not really too sure on everything that's going to happen. There's so many questions that we still have that they did not answer yet. So, I'm hoping now that they're on the planet, we're going to learn more about Hayate's dad. I'm, I don't know if they're going to show more about Mikamo and her, you know, her past and everything. Because it seems like they're kind of just brushing that to the side. Though it may come up later on, obviously, as the fact with Royd and... The whole Winderman Planet kind of thing now that they are there. More on Keith and Hines probably. But yeah, I'm definitely excited to see the next episode. This episode, in in terms of how everything was in the past episodes, it definitely is a, a, I would say a plus. I definitely enjoyed this episode more than the past episode. The past episode was very informative. They had a lot of information that was pretty interesting and had some, some of its moments. But this episode, finally get back to the... We got some dog fights. We got some new music. One new music. Some good songs. Now that Freya is no longer just, you know, being a child kind of thing. Like, oh, no, I don't want to do this. And Hayate is being, you know, I won't fly if you don't sing. I won't sing if you don't fly kind of thing. That's out of the way. They may have trying to keep forcing damn Mirage down our throats, but I still don't see it. And I still think that in the end, it will be Freya and Hayate. But let's not talk about that for now. Because obviously... It just really, like, it just bugs me the way that they're pushing it kind of thing. If they really wanted to make this a love triangle, they could have done so much better, to be honest, for Miraj, honestly. I see a lot of connection and chemistry with Freya and Hayate, but I do not see it with Miraj and Hayate. You may think differently, but that's my opinion. Sorry about that, but I just really feel like there's not really that much of a chemistry. She just all of a sudden had feelings for him, and all of a sudden they're trying to force it down her throat that she has a connection as well like how Freya has with Hayate but yeah so that was pretty much the episode overall nothing about the star singer in this one nothing about Mikamo's past in this one nothing about Hayate's dad in this one but at least we got some action at least it looks like now that they are on the planet we will get more answers since now maybe they will talk about his dad more now that you know maybe some survivors some people on the planet will be like oh yeah I remember your father and maybe he's a good guy maybe he's a bad guy I'm not too sure we gotta wait to see in the next episode but yeah maybe more informa information on Casim as well because literally I'm confused on why the hell he just went full on killing himself pretty much but yeah that's all I gotta say guys hope you enjoyed this anime kingdom review if you have any questions feel free to comment below there's anything I missed and you want to talk about comment below as well and if you did enjoy the first of a like and if you haven't already feel free to subscribe for more content it really does help the channel and yeah that's all I gotta say guys Four more episodes. Can't wait to see what's going to be coming coming of it. Like I said before, I'm really hoping there's some good action and finally get some an questions answered. I know someone said that there's a possibility that hopefully, hopefully they don't do this because I really don't want them to do this, that they just leave us, you know, building up cliffhanger and then have a movie. I do not want that. I want this to be end it in a good way. We don't need a movie. Maybe it'll be better. I'm not too sure actually because if they do that there'll be more time I guess kind of in a way. I don't know. What do you guys think? Feel free to put your thoughts on below on what you think of the possibility of it ending in a cliffhanger with a movie coming out after. Do you like that? Do you not like that? List your reasons below. Love to hear your guys thoughts as always. Hope you guys enjoyed this anime review. Until next time guys. See ya.